Hi, Vince here again. In my last video, I showed you guys how to do a full install of Linux onto a USB drive in VirtualBox. This time around, I'm going to show you how you can boot back into that USB drive with Linux using VirtualBox as well. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, let's say for example, you want to work with that installation, you might want to do something like update it, or you might want to pull down some files back onto Windows, uh, because especially Windows doesn't really handle any other file systems very well besides NTFS and FAT. You might want to boot back into that USB drive using the VirtualBox if you don't want to shut down your machine and reboot back into the USB on your hardware. Now, there is a limitation in VirtualBox where it doesn't really allow you to easily boot from a USB drive. You'll need to enter some commands into the command prompt to allow this to happen. The instructions about how to do this are shown in this article here. I will show you how to do this first of all in Windows and later in the video I'll show you how to do the same thing in Linux as a host. Now scrolling through this article, the first thing you need to do is open up disk management in Windows. So the easiest way to do that is to right click on your start menu and select disk management. In here, what you'll need to do is try to identify which is the USB drive and that's usually going to be somewhere down near the bottom. The best way to probably identify it would be with how big it is. In my case, it's a 120 gig drive, and you'll see here two partitions which Windows doesn't really recognize as anything except a healthy partition because it can't really read the ext4 uh, file system. In my case, it's disk 10. Now just make note of that in your head, maybe write it down somewhere, because you'll need that in the following steps. Returning to the article here, the next thing we need to do is open up a command prompt. We can do that simply by going to the Start menu and typing CMD. Now it's important here that you don't just click on it to open it. What you'll need to do is right click it and select Run as Administrator. Next, what you'll need to do is follow these instructions and put in these commands into your command prompt. First, you'll need to change into the directory where your virtual box is installed. Next, you'll need to paste this command in. Now, what you'll need to do is at the end of this command, where the little hash symbol is, you'll need to put in the number that you saw in your disk management so in my case, it's disk number 10 of your USB drive. So you'll need to replace the hash with a 10 and simply hit enter. And hopefully you'll get this message that the disk was created successfully. What this command has done is created a shortcut file or a sim link to tell VirtualBox where to find your USB drive. And in this situation, it saved that file to the C drive. Of course, you can then go and find this file and move it to where you would like to save all your virtual machines. Next, what we can do is go ahead and open VirtualBox. To do so, when you find VirtualBox in your start menu, what you'll need to do is to right click and choose run as administrator, just like we did with command prompt earlier. Otherwise, this method doesn't work. Now, I've already got VirtualBox open here as administrator. We can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. We'll call this boot USB. Choose Linux as your operating system type and Ubuntu 64-bit. Let's bump up our RAM to 4 gigs. And in this section, when we have to choose our hard disk, what we already have is a link file that we created earlier to the USB drive. So we can actually go ahead and choose use existing virtual hard disk file. And we click this little icon here, 
may need to choose add. Now that command we ran earlier would have saved the file to the C drive and here it is here. We choose open, choose and we can create. We need to still adjust a few settings to make sure this works properly. In the system we can get rid of the floppy, increase to two CPUs, display, increase the video memory to the maximum of 128 megabytes, change the display to VBOX VGA, and enable 3D acceleration. Importantly, you'll need to go into the USB section and choose USB 3. Okay, let's start her up. Enter in the encryption key that we put in earlier. We can now log in. And there you have it. We have successfully booted into our USB drive through VirtualBox. Next up, I'm going to reboot my system into Linux and I'll show you how to do the same thing with a Linux host running VirtualBox. Right, so in Linux, what you'll first need to do is open up a terminal window, and next you'll need to determine whereabouts in your system the USB drive that you want to boot from is at. And you can do this in a couple of ways by first of all typing sudo fdisk-l, entering your password and in my case it appears that my USB NVMe drive is at SDK. Uh, another way you can do this is to type LSBLK and you might be able to identify your disk again by the size of your disk. Um, it sh usually shouldn't be any disk that's already been used here. It should be a USB drive that's not currently being mounted. And in this situation, again, I can confirm it is SDK. Just remember that because we'll need that in the next step. Next, what we need to do is use this command. Uh, don't worry if it's very long. I will copy and paste it into the description in the, of the video down below. What we need to do is replace at the end here, SDX with the letter that we need for our drive, and then press enter. And with any luck, our file was created successfully. In this case, in my home directory. Next, what we'll do is go ahead and open up VirtualBox in a another desktop. This time around, you actually don't need to open as administrator or root. You can just use it uh, in your normal virtual box. We'll create a new machine. We'll call it boot USB. Select Linux as a type of operating system and again in this case it was Ubuntu 64-bit. We'll bump it up to, again to 4 gigs of RAM and use existing hard disk file. Now we may need to find the file again. There it is in my home directory, usb.vmdk. Choose create. We will just quickly sort out some of these settings. Bump it up to two processors, change your USB to three. That should do us, and we can go ahead and try and boot it up. And it appears that we have it up and going again.
There you are. We have successfully booted a fully installed Linux distribution on a USB drive through VirtualBox. That's all for today. Thank you very much again for watching. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. Bye for now.